welcome back to the breakdown today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to start a bucket server in Minecraft 1.13.1 now before we get on into this I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour server meaning it's only up when it's using your computer's resources and when you're actively basically kind of managing it playing on it, all of that stuff on top of that it uses your own IP address which means you don't want to give it out to anyone and everyone like do not post the IP address of this server in the comment section down below the reason for that is because anyone who gets this IP address could take your internet offline and slow it down and they can also find out where you live you'll see that at the end of the video that people can find out where you live your city your town all that stuff as well as hurt your internet take your internet down and because of that this is only a server that you want to give to your friends family people like that if you want to serve that's up all the time that you can give to anyone in the world then I would recommend going and checking out the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash MC server that is going to take you over to game servers which will allow you to buy an awesome 24-hour DDoS protected bucket server running 1.13 1.13.1 for just three dollars per month that'll give you an awesome bucket server up and running you can actually get a vanilla server over there for just one dollar per month so nevertheless guys go check it out again that is the first First link down below the breakdown.xyz slash MC server. We absolutely love game servers and I'm sure you will too. But nevertheless, what if you want a server that is just for your friends and family and that is not up all the time that uses your own computer's resources? Well, let's go ahead and jump on into it. The first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below and it will take you here. This is the how to start a bucket server page on our website. This goes in depth and if I go a little fast you could always come to this article and see what's up but no matter what you need to come here and click on the download a bucket button right up here at the top. That'll take us over to here where we then want to download the 1.13.1 version of bucket right up here again at the top. Click download there and it will take us up to this page where in the center here you want to click on craft bucket dash 1.13.1 jar. Quite a mouthful but click on that in the center of the page and it will download here in the bottom left. After a second it's going to ask us if we want to keep this file and we do want to keep this file because uh, as long as it ends in dot jar there and starts with craft bucket we know it is 110% safe. And as you can see there it goes now asking us if we want to keep the file and we do want to keep it and now we need to go ahead and minimize our browser. So when we minimize our browser here it will take us to our desktop where I have craft bucket on my desktop if you don't don't freak out just go up to the top left for me it's probably in the bottom left of your screen down here and click on the Windows icon there it'll open up this and then you just want to type in downloads exactly like that right so now you should have this downloads folder you can click on that and most likely buckets in here drag it to your desktop because we uh, need it to be there once it's on your desktop go ahead and right click and create a new folder and you can title this whatever I'm just gonna title this bucket server then you want to take craft bucket here and drag it into that bucket server folder and now once we're in here we want to go ahead right click create a new text document right like that and then you want to go to the description and find this code right here right this code is in the description down below and it's going to uh, basically allow your server to have two gigabytes of RAM right if you want to add more than two gigabytes of RAM to your server say you wanted to add four you would just change that to 4G but we're just gonna go ahead and leave it as 2G there because that's all I want for my server you can have as much or as little RAM as you want as long as your computer can support it but you want to copy that code from the description open that new text document we created paste it in that new text document and then you want to click file save as and then you want to name this run.bat run.bat and you want to save it as all files make sure save type as is all files not text documents when you click save we can go ahead and close out of everything that uh, we have open here so we can delete the new text document we created we don't need that anymore but we should have this run file you see that go ahead double click on that run file and now you should see probably error this build is outdated or it won't say that it doesn't matter what it says there don't freak out as long as it says server will start in 20 seconds you're good or if the server just automatically starts guess what you're good there as well so I'm gonna go ahead and let that start up and I'll see you guys once it does so there we go the server is now starting but boom it's suddenly stopping server saving world what happened there well we need to agree to the EULA but we had to run it to be able to get the EULA so let's go ahead and just press any key to continue and then come back over here to our bucket server file now if you have any issues with that if for some reason right bucket doesn't open or it gives you an error and it doesn't load in the logs the EULA and the server properties right if it doesn't do that 
no worries, I have a solution for you. Go to the description and go to the second link, or sorry, third link down below. It is going to take you here. This is our in-depth tutorial on how to download and install the Java Development Kit, which is required for you to be able to run your bucket server. So go here, go through this tutorial, tells you how to find the version, how to download it, all of that stuff is outlined. Then you should be able to run your bucket file without any problems. If you do still have problems, go to this link, which is the fourth link down below. And this is the jar fix. And basically what this is going to do is this is a simple download and it's all walked through here in this tutorial. And uh, basically download this, run it, and it'll fix any and all jar arguments on your computer and get things really up and running perfectly. After that, you should uh, have this, right? You should have the server properties, EULA, craft bucket, logs, and a run file, which we created. Now we want to go ahead and just double click on the EULA. It should open with notepad. And then you want to change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, as long as you agree to the EULA, which is right here. And this server will not be breaking that, so we're good to go. No worries there. Now let's go ahead and click file, save, and then we can close out of the EULA. Now we want to double click on our run file again, and this time it's going to go through and actually start the server. I'll see you in a quick jump cut. Now the server is in fact starting, and as you can see, this is development build. Eventually, Spigot will be out in a non-development build, which I'm very excited for. And if you guys do want to play on a 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server, and you don't want to buy one yourself, and your friends just aren't able to connect, or you're having an issue with this server, you can actually come play 1.13 grief protected survival it's a 1.13.1 .1 server at play.breakdowncraft.com that is our very own server we put a ton of time and a ton of work into that so come join us play.breakdowncraft.com 1.13.1 .1 grief protected survival nevertheless our server has now started over here which is uh, pretty cool we know that because it says done there now we just go ahead and type stop, right? S-T-O-P. By the way, for those of you wondering, if it says can't keep up, is the server overloaded? That means you need to add more RAM, right? So go ahead, type stop there. It's going to stop the server, save everything, and then we can press any key to continue. So we do that, and now we need to go ahead and make it to where your friends can join this server. So doing that is actually pretty easy. We just need to port forward. But before you click off the video, because you've never been able to port forward before, guess what? I have helped hundreds of thousands of people port forward. So stick through this with me. I think you'll be able to do it. Let's go ahead and dive into it. The first thing we need to do though is click on the Windows key again in the top left for me probably in the bottom left of your screen that Windows button there click on that and then type in CMD. Once you have this command prompt here go ahead and click on it and then in here you want to type IPCONFIG IP config and then hit enter. It'll open up this where you should have an IPv4 address and all sorts of stuff. By the way some of you might have multiple addresses here right you might have more than one like set of these numbers. If that's the case, you are most likely going to use the one that starts in 192. Now, if you're like on a big like network at like a apartment complex or something like that, that might not be the case, but most likely you aren't. And if you're on your own personal home Wi-Fi, it's most likely going to start with 192. It's not always the case. If you only have one set of numbers here, use the numbers that are there. But if you have two, go with the one that typically starts in 192, not the one that starts in 10 or something like that. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and set this up. So the first thing we want to do is come over here to our server properties file. See that? It's just called server. It's a properties file. I can double click on it and it opens with notepad. If yours does it, no worries. When you double click on it, it should say, what do you want to open this with? Just select notepad. Then once you're in here, you want to find where it says server IP. See that right there? And we want to take our IPv4 address over here and copy it in to where it says server IP. So in my case, my IPv4 address is 192.168.1.1.1. .1 yours may be completely different from that. If that's the case, no worries. Don't freak out. Whatever your IPv4 address is, go ahead and paste it in there. It might be the same as mine. It might be completely different, but whatever it is, put it in there next to server IP. Then go ahead and click file, save, and now we can go ahead and just close out of everything for now. We'll be opening up that bucket server folder again, but for right now, we'll keep it closed. However, we do need to keep this open because we need the default gateway, which in our case is 192.168.1.1. Yours may be different from that. Whatever your default gateway is, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and take it, go back to your browser, and then you want to just create a new tab, a brand new tab on your browser, and type in that default gateway. Again, in my case, 192.168.1.1. Now, if you hit enter, you're most likely going to see a screen exactly like this, or you're going to see something completely different, but what you should see is some sort of a login box. 
What do you even enter there? What do you put in this login box? Well, if you go to one of the links down below, it's under the Java links down below, it's this right here. This is our complete guide on how to find your router's password. It's helped out over 30,000 people at this point, so uh, yeah. This is a great way to figure out your router's password. It gives you all the different methods. Start with method one, work all the way down through method five until your router password has been discovered. Then you come back over here, you enter it in, and you can log right on in to your router. Once you've logged into your router, you need to port forward. Now, I said I had helped hundreds of thousands of people for port forward, and so much so that I created an in-depth guide on how to port forward your router right here. Now, this goes through the standard process that most routers are gonna have in text form. But what the real benefit here is actually this video. This video goes through all of the most popular routers that are out there. All of the most popular routers are covered in this video. It goes in depth covering every single router that I honestly could think of and I put it in this video. So go here, watch this. It's an in-depth guide and it'll really help you out. Once you've done that, we do need to port forward. So yours may be a little different, but I'm just going to walk through this here. I'm going to give you a bunch of different terms that it could be for you, but let's go ahead and do it. So on Linksys, it is in security here. Now for you, it might be an advanced, it might be an admin, it might be in security, it might be an advanced advanced, but you're looking for something like that. Once you've done that, you're going to be looking for port forwarding. But you could also be looking for apps and gaming. You could look for NAT gaming, N-A-T space gaming. You could do NAT and applications, applications and gaming, gaming and applications, port forwarding, port forwarding slash port triggering. Those are all different names that port forwarding could be in your router. Once you've found it, in my case, it's apps and gaming, you then might need to click on single port forwarding or just port forwarding or something like that from that point. Now, in this case, we need to go ahead and just add a new single port forward, or you might just have a bunch of boxes. You just want to pick one of those boxes. doesn't matter which, but you want to add a new port forward. And then for the name or the application name or the ID, you can name that whatever. I'm just going to put Minecraft for anything to involve a port, anything, no matter what it says, internal, external, port one, port two, whatever your port say, it doesn't matter. You're going to put 25565 if it says a port, right? If it is asking for a port, you want to put 25565. Same thing for internal port here. It's asking for a port, so we put 25565. For protocol, we're going to do both, or TCP slash UDP, or UDP slash TCP. Basically, you just want to make sure that both protocols are in fact selected. Then for the device IP, we're going to put our IPv4 address that was over here in command prompt. In our case, 192.168.1.123. Now, here's the deal. Yours may just have device and then have a drop down. If that's the case, just click on your computer that you're setting up your bucket server on. Whatever computer that is, go ahead and just enter that there, right? Then go ahead and save the port forward. Then you might have to click apply. You might have to click okay. Whatever it says on your router is the correct thing to do. Then go ahead and click okay on the Linksys router and your port forward is completed. Congratulations. The hard part of this is over. So now we need to just test your server. We're going to go ahead, go back to the desktop here and open up this, which is our uh, run file, right? We want to go ahead and double click on the run file, not the server properties file, the run file there. We then also need to go ahead and open up Minecraft while we're at it, because why not, right? We need to, we need to have Minecraft open. As you can see, we are in fact playing 1.13.1 latest release there. So go ahead and click play. And this will launch on into everything. So our bucket server will begin to start over here on the left while Minecraft is starting up. I will see you guys once everything is loaded. So there we go, Minecraft's loaded up. And while that server's loading over there, check this out. Look how awesome this is. Play.breakdowncraft.com. Grief protected 1.13 survival. Looking incredible. I mean, if we, if we go to spawn here, we got a simple spawn, but it gets it gets things going. You can check out all the information for this server in the description down below if uh, you want to come play with us, because uh, it's pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and test our bucket server. So doing that is pretty simple. We can just direct connect, and we're going to direct connect first to our IPv4 address, which in my case was 192.168.1.123. This is just going to confirm that everything is up and running. 
this is not what your friends are going to join through. This is just what you're joining through. And as we can see, it is up and running. We have joined in here. This seed looks pretty cool. Everybody always likes me to do, oh, I don't have the permissions to do that. What does that mean? You don't have the permissions to do that. Well, come over here to your command prompt, right? Your server console is actually what this is. And just type OP Nix Games or OP your username. Whatever your username is, type OP space your username and hit enter. Now we're going to be opt and I can do slash seed right like that. So you guys can use this seed if you'd like. But nevertheless, how do your friends join this server? Well, we're going to go back to our handy dandy browser and go to the link in the description down below that is called the breakdown.xyz slash what's my IP. That will take you here where you can actually see some of the dangers of giving out this IP address that this server is hosted on to everybody. They're going to be able to see the city and town you live in, your latitude and longitude coordinates, your zip code all sorts of stuff will show up there now there's obviously a big black box over here because i don't want you guys to see that information there's also a black box over the first three digits of a my ip address you can see the last three digits here just because uh, i want you guys to know i'm using the same ip address here that i am in minecraft nevertheless go ahead take this and copy that ip address then I'll go ahead and just conveniently use Minecraft to cover that up. Now we want to go ahead and direct connect this time to our IP address. Our public IP address is what that's called that we found on whatsmyip.com. And then once you're in here, you can see that 128 is the same numbers we had back over there. If we go ahead and open up our server console as well, we can join the server. And bada bing, bada boom, right on in we go and we can join. Your bucket server is now set up. If your friends can't join via your public IP address, all you need to do is turn off your firewall, most likely on your router, and see we're getting that lag. Do you see that lag that's happening? That just means we need more RAM added to the server, so change that 2G to 4G or 8G or whatever it is. But nevertheless, if your friends can't join, there's a firewall blocking the connection, either on your router or on your PC. It could also be an antivirus on your PC. So make sure to go in there and set those exceptions appropriately and let people in. For example, some routers, you might need to change your security settings from high to medium or low to let people join via your port forward. But there you go. Your server is now set up. But how do you add plugins to it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. And there's a video on your screen right now, as well as at the eye at the top of your screen, that will show you everything you need to know about getting Bucket plugins installed on your Bucket server. But nevertheless, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content exactly like this every single day of the week. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown, and I'm out, guys. Peace.